down. Let's hear it for the Video Brains front of house and back of house crew. Let's hear it for all the other amazing speakers tonight. It's Nick, Luke, Rob, Emma, and Tom, who's coming after you. I'm sure we're fabulous. Uh, so my name is Alice Bell, I do not have a mohawk because I haven't found a uh, hairdresser in central or south London yet. I do not have any shoes on because my shoes are wet. Uh, and I have come to you tonight via a 90s rock star's funeral apparently. Um, I work at uh, Video... Ooh, I've gone too far. I work at Video Gamer. <laughs> Um, and we do a website, we do reviews, features, lots of videos, uh, some serious stuff, although we did recently do a video that was three solid minutes of dick jokes. And on that note... <laughs> yeah. uh, so if you've seen me before, I did, the last talk I did, and indeed the first talk I did, uh, was uh, to mostly do with sort of sex and relationships and games. Uh, and that means I can slide by on no actual content and just put in dick jokes and it kind of works okay. So a couple of weeks ago, because this talk isn't about sex, so a couple of weeks ago I was like, Jake, can I put a picture of a penis in if, let me finish, <laughs> it's dressed as Kanye West. <laughs> and he was like, no, but <laughs> you should all look up this photographer. <laughs> Uh, because this talk is kind of about place and space and games and how things have different uses uh, and if you look at something from a different perspective and a new perspective it can become something else entirely. And this woman uh, dresses penises up in the clothes from dolls <laughs> of famous figures from history. Uh, I was once in a bidding war online with a bunch of people for a limited edition Fidel Castro doll and when she won it... <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh, Rob's found them! <laughs> she threw the doll away. <laughs> so that's an oblique oh. dick joke for you all to enjoy. <laughs> and while you all have your phones out, remember to tweet along with the hashtag video brains. <laughs> so, <laughs> place and space. So this is a theme uh, which I actually stole from my English literature course at university. Uh, and it's, yeah, one of the only things it did give me, apart from making me basically unemployable. Um, so it's, it's, it's more complicated than I can uh, remember or articulate, but basically it's the idea that uh, different places and different spaces can take on different uses based on how we use them. So, quiz time. What is this? <coughs> Wrong. <laughs> uh -uh. You need to think more like a dick. So, again, Vagina. what... <laughs> <laughs> okay, not literally like a dick. Okay, you need to think more pretentiously, should I say that? So what is this? Playground. The good, good answers. The answer I was actually looking for is a swimming pool from <laughs> California. Or well, specifically, if we're getting really uh, in depth with it, it's actually some concrete in Exeter molded to look like a swimming pool from California which is now how skate parks are designed, because in California, they started using empty swimming pools to skate in, and that made the swimming pools, because of the way the space was being used, that made them now a skate park. And in fact, you could theoretically fill that with water and use it as a swimming pool again, even though its primary purpose is now as a skate park. Uh, another example, does anyone know who this is? You do, I know you do, Jim. It's Danny McCaskill. Well done, it is Danny McCaskill. <laughs> so Danny McCaskill is a trial cyclist. He's very, very good at what he does uh, because he grew up on the Isle of Skye. And what the fuck else are you gonna do if you grow up on the Isle of Skye? <laughs> um, so he uh, is partnered with Red Bull and he's worked with Channel 4 and GoPro to do these amazing videos of cycling and, and using spaces uh, to cycle on and do tricks on in a way that he would not normally. So this is Industrial Revolution from a couple of years ago, which was used <laughs> in a lecture for the original Place in Space talk. 
So sorry to that lecturer for stealing half his content and passing off my own. Um, so here he's using a disused uh, railway to uh, skate, uh, to cycle over and uh, use in a completely new way. This is Cascadia, where he uh, sort of does a kind of free run cycle um, down through, I think it's Buenos Aires. Uh, it's a very, very good video, but he does a lot of the footage from the GoPro strapped on his helmet, and it's fucking terrifying. So what does this have to do with video games? Well, number one, Dino McCaskill can break the laws of physics as if it were a Skyrim game. <laughs> number two, there are some video games that build an environment that uh, they build to be sort of realistic and then encourage you to use it in an incorrect way. So we have games that encourage free running and traversal in, a, in, in how you would not normally use that space in real life, like Assassin's Creed and like Mirror's Edge. Uh, but number three, and what's kind of the point of my talk, is that video games are their own space. So, uh, if we do some kind of, uh, let's do some basic uh, video game arithmetic, I guess. So if you have this equation, have the same point, plus a med kit, plus waist high cover, what does that equal? It means a fight, damn right it does. So, because video games have this kind of familiar sort of coded way um, that we can sort of, if we play enough games, we can kind of predict what's happening, they become their own space. In fact, there are some games that sort of flag this sort of thing up. So, uh, Knights of the Old Republic, which is one of my favourite games, uh, when shit was about to go down, <laughs> Uh, the rogue character said, I have a bad feeling about this. And, and the game specifically told you that if someone says that, you should probably save, because there's a big fight coming up. Um, there are other ways that we sort of have learned to traverse games because they are a game, because they are their own category of space. Um, so this is a shot uh, from Dragon Age Inquisition, uh, specifically from the area Empress du Lyon, which is, <laughs> come on, that was pretty good. Um, uh, which I've chosen specifically because my big brother, I watched him for about five minutes uh, run solidly into a wall because that was the way the quest marker was showing him to go on the mini-map. <laughs> <laughs> and I watched him do it despite the fact that the developers had put in a sort of nice natural path to follow that if you watched, that, fit, that you, he was just like, no, quest marker, and just like... I did, didn't, didn't back it, like I had to tell him to not do it. Um, so we don't navigate games often like the space they actually are, like the space they're portraying. We navigate them like they're a video game. So uh, you, some people, like I do it a lot, I run backwards and forwards and do a kind of grid search so I don't miss anything. Or if I know that's the way I've got to go, I go, right, okay, I'm going to go that way in case there's something down there. Um, and we know, or at least I think we know, that we treat games like their own. Uh, space because when those techniques don't work and we're not expecting it, it kind of fucks up. So this is Everybody's Gone to the Rapture, which is a game that I enjoyed, uh, mainly because it was like Alice's hometown sim to the classic <laughs> game. Um, uh, but when I played this, I kind of played it wrong and I ended up missing a lot of the game because it, it's, it's actually built like a town. It's very realistically built like a town. And the way you're sort of supposed to traverse it is like you would walk around a town. So you naturally follow a path, you follow the little lights that you see, and you kind of sway in a nice rhythm. And I was like, nope, don't want to miss anything, and just walked <laughs> in a straight line. But because I did that, it meant I did miss things. It meant I didn't get the story cues. It meant that the game didn't queue up properly. Uh, then we've got Super Hot, <laughs> um, which fucks, but again, it's a game that I really liked. Um, does anyone know? Oh, I'll describe it anyway. The Super Hot is a shooter uh, which only moves if you move. So you can see all the bullets coming towards you extremely slowly, you can get out of the way. Um, and I was playing it like a regular shooter when I started playing it, so I meant I was coming out shooting and then going back into cover, <laughs> which doesn't work because then you can't see what's happening. And if you're just stood, and, and the game won't progress. So if I were just stood behind cover, <laughs> nothing would then happen. <laughs> and, and I would, yeah. 
Uh, and then by the time you probably head out to see what is happening, it's already too late. Uh, up next again, this is by a watch by Campo Santo, despite what <laughs> that uh, erroneously says there. Um, uh, if I watch you play uh, a guy whose his job is to watch for fires in a forest, and you move around the forest, you follow the little paths, the little trails, you can go off and explore if you want, and there's a natural kind of day-night cycle, and there's weather and stuff. And at one point in the game, you get a camera, a disposable camera, that you can take pictures with. And it is, it's just to take pictures with. And, and if you've got the PC version, you can get prints of the pictures you take. But I got the camera, and I was like, well, I know what to do with cameras in video games, and I used it to document evidence <laughs> of the things that people were doing in the forest. I was literally going like, litter. This <laughs> <laughs> fire has been put out properly. Uh, I spent the whole game doing that. So my point is, I guess, that there is a whole new kind of raft of games that are coming out that mean that I don't know how to play games anymore. <laughs> it's not working for me. Um, this is the Christian Science Church in Dixon, Illinois. Uh, it's a really beautiful building and it's built around in a curve kind of around an oak tree that was already there. And what it shows us is that if we look at things from a new perspective, they can become something entirely different. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is the end of my talk. <laughs>